Hello and welcome to this roundup of my five favorite romance novels that I read this month. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. As always, these are presented in alphabetical order by author last name. First up, we have Hotel of Secrets by Diana Biller. This one is a historical romance set in 1870s Vienna and is a standalone novel. Maria is the owner slash manager of a flailing hotel in Vienna. After her mother's mismanagement and an economic downturn, Maria hopes to rebuild the hotel to its previous grandeur. Meanwhile, Eli is an American in town looking for some clues on some smuggled code set from the hotel's address, and while he's there, he definitely saves Maria from certain death multiple times. Uh, this book was kind of a slow start for me, but once these two team up and find her assailant and also give in to their attraction, I really couldn't put it down. It's amazing that these two very serious people are able to smile and find joy and humor with each other. Plus, Maria's complicated family history comes into play at multiple points of the story, making things delightfully interesting. Next up is The Prospector's Only Prospect by Danny Collins, which is a historical Western romance set in pre-Civil War America and is a standalone novel. We have a dis divorced and disgraced with nowhere to go, Marigold sets off to marry a stranger. Her sister had been set to be a mail-order bride but found another suitor, so Marigold takes her place and travels west. When she arrives, Virgil is angry to find a stranger instead of his bride, but he takes her home with him anyway to keep house and take care of his three kids. They bicker and argue, but it's clear that Marigold is good with the kids and adapts well to her primitive surroundings. This one's definitely a slow burn romance with lots of missteps, mostly from Virgil, but the writing is refreshingly humorous and you will appreciate the competence from both parties and a willingness to work together. I had a great time reading this book. Can't wait to see more from this author in this setting. This one is One Night with an Earl by Tina Gabrielle, which is book one of the Daring Ladies series. We start strong right here with at a, ooh, we're at a brothel where Anna is trying to lose her virginity before her 30th birthday. Ruined by a family scandal a decade prior, Anna now works as a chaperone to a young lady making her debut into society. She seeks one night of pleasure and has the brothel madam help her out. Oliver is a newly inherited Earl after the death of his father and brother, both of whom were irresponsible and gross, and he's there with his brother's friends. Of course, Anna and Oliver are instantly attracted and proceed with a tryst, as expected. Later, Anna finds Oliver at her house to court her charge and also finds out that his family is the one who ruined hers. There's so much potential here for angst and drama with the intertwined families, plus Anna has been hiding her identity from the world, basically. At some point, you know that the lies will catch up to her, but in the meantime, the development of the romance between these two is absolutely delightful. Here we have The Work of Art by Mimi Matthews it is book one of the Somerset Story series. We've got a strikingly beautiful and kind young lady, Phyllida, living with her uncle and cousins after her grandfather has passed away, and now she's being prepared for her debut and season. However, her uncle has kind of sort of almost sold her to a much older and cruel duke who is known for collecting rare and beautiful things. She finds kindness and connection with another man, Arthur, who is an injured war veteran. When it seems like her marriage to the Duke is eminent, she enters into a marriage of convenience with Arthur, and he takes her away to his estate for protection. In reading this book, I appreciated the slow build of trust and companionship between Phyllida and Arthur, and that they were able to talk through their issues for the most part. Even with the external drama of meddlesome family members, the romance here was solid and heartwarming. And lastly, this month, we have Love and Other Perennial Habits by Emmeline Warden. This is book one of the Genus of Gentlemen series, and it's also available on Kindle Unlimited. 
we have a widowed Countess Meg finally out from under her cruel husband's thumb, and now she's restoring an old manor in the country. She meets Oliver, a second son, and now the heir to a duke who is doing his own botanical experiments in the country. While away from town, both Meg and Oliver can be themselves, freed from the strictures of society, and they very quickly and easily fall in love. They're happy and productive at fixing up her manor, and things just can't go wrong. Except the reader knows that their holiday will end, and certainly Oliver will have to deal with the realities of his station. Now, as expected, when Oliver is called back to London, heartbreak and angst sets in for both of them. This book made me feel all the feels and tear up all the tears in all the best ways. I'm definitely looking forward to the release of book two with a heartbroken hero that I need to learn more about and I didn't see coming when I was reading this book. Hopefully you're able to pick up one of my March favorites as well, or if you've read them, leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Links to these five are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos, and you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.